Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. We are still on site at Indie Bios Demo Day number eight. We are now gonna be talking with Michelle Zhu. Hello. Hi there. Thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. No problem. Really excited. She's the CEO of Tinctorium. All right, so teach us about what you were just pitching on stage. Yeah, so here at Tinctorium, we are making more sustainable indigo dye for the denim industry. Um, so in a nutshell, we basically have created a completely nature-based process to combat the, what we like to call, two-part problem with indigo. So um, problem number one, if I can get into it already, if yes, you don't mind, please. is um, a, a chemical synthesis process. Um, indigo is heavily petroleum reliant. Um, so to make it, you have to require, it, it requires over 100 kilograms of indigo for every kilogram, or, sorry, 100 kilograms of petroleum for every kilogram of indigo produced. Um, but on top of that, Whoa. that chemical synthesis process also involves other toxic chemicals like formaldehyde and cyanide, like literally known poisons going into the production of this core ingredient for making your jeans. Um, so that's one problem. And then the second problem is um, indigo is kind of a unique dye. So it, it crystallizes really quickly in the presence of air, and that makes it not water soluble. And so to actually apply it as a dye, you have to add in equal parts um, a water polluting chemical reducing agent. And that stuff ends up in you know, the waste streams, polluting water sources all over Asia, um, and it's really bad for the environment. So our solution basically addresses... You're about to get into the solution, yeah. but there's so much to still unpack with the oh, problem. Sure, yeah. We're wearing jeans yeah. right now, and like, I, we don't know about these things. I don't mm -hmm. know about these things. Yeah. These are really, we gotta dig into the supply chain of things. Whoa, okay, so how is it 100 kilograms of petroleum for a kilogram of indigo? Yeah. What? It's insane. So um, the key kind of, uh, the key chemical in producing the indigo is this petroleum derivative called aniline. Um, and it's kind of a inefficient process, right? So you need a lot of petroleum in order to make this aniline compound. Um, and in fact, it's, <laughs> you know, the petroleum reliance, right? Like non-renewable sources, that's part of it. And then also this aniline compound is uh, known to be potentially carcinogenic. <laughs> so it's just like all sorts of problems that goes into uh, the, this chemical production process. And then the, uh, what, what are we, so what are we doing with this indigo? So we get a kilogram of this indigo and then there's some, it, the, we're, you said we're polluting water systems as mm -hmm. well because we can't, how do, because we have to get it on the actual gene material. Right. Like, are these, like, how do we dye the fabric? Is the fabric just like not dyed indigo when we? I mean, it certainly is. So actually, um, I guess when you make your jeans, let's, let's, let's take a, look, a deeper dive into the supply chain, right? So, um, you don't you don't just you know put the dye in a bucket and then like take the full garment and just kind just of like dip that. it yeah. in and, and, and get then it's jeans. Good to go. Right? Tie dye. <laughs> not not at all. But I think what actually makes denim such a polluting and potentially problematic kind of area of fashion is the fact that its supply chain is so complex. So you need to take these cotton threads in the thread form. Um, and dye it at that form in order to form this kind of like ring dye effect. Um, and then you weave these, you know, di indigo dyed threads together in order to form the fabric. Um, and then after you form the fabric, um, you can kind of like wash down the fabric in order to create kind of the faded effect. And because it has that kind of white core, you can fade it down and then it'll create the lighter blues, you know, kind of it brings out the white, you know, colors in the inside of the thread. So um, that's, that's kind of taking you through how it happens. But of course, because you're kind of going through that complex production line now, you have a lot of indigo that's wasted. You have a lot of kind of the runoff from the, you know, both the water uh, pollution in the, in the dye process, as well as sort of the washing process afterwards. And where are we making most of the blue jeans in the world right now? Most of it is made in Asia. Um, I 
Yeah, most of it is made in Asia. There's actually um, no more uh, dye mills here in the United no States. No more dye mills in yeah, the US. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's, it's pretty rough. Uh. Um, I think a more interesting question actually is where are we making most of the indigo okay, in the yes. world? Where is that? Um, and that is primarily in China. So over 90% of the world's um, indigo. indigo supply is made in China. And over 50% is made by just one producer alone. So it's a really consolidated market. Um, it's an oligopoly. One is 50 percent yeah That's exactly huge. exactly exactly and so of course they can go you know very much like an un not environmentally regulated right and um you well, know you and know what then the if, name if is? Do you, do uh, you know? it's called wonderful chemicals yeah oh. yeah of course it's called <laughs> wonderful yeah, exactly. chemicals ironically it's called <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow that's like the happy meal yeah. this is ridiculous to get away with this kind of stuff all right okay continue yes no, I mean, I yeah. The only other thing to add is just it's like even China, right, is like cracking down on environmental regulation, and so then Damn. the convenient move is like push over the border to Mongolia to make the production. Oh, yeah. Well, so wonderful chemicals are just like moving countries as the <laughs> regulations get. Damn, this is crazy. Okay, so this is what's wrong. All right, so what is what are you doing that is right and yeah. sustainable and the future of blue jeans? Let's get yeah, there. yeah. So. Um, our process, like I said, is, is nature inspired. So we basically mimic a process that happens in plants. Um, we are using bacteria, so completely sustainable sources uh, and completely renewable sources, having bacteria, um, feeding them with sugar, and literally having those bacteria grow and secrete an indigo precursor. Um, and then we apply this enzymatic treatment that then also bypasses the need for the reducing agent and that's how we kind of apply our dye. Yeah. It's a little sim it's a little Whoa. simplistic, but yeah. Whoa, yeah, it's a little simplistic. <laughs> it's just complex biology. Yeah. So so okay, so back so bacteria seem like, the, like so many people have now sat down here and just been like, yeah, we, you know, add genes to bacteria and make them produce different things. Yep. And I'm just like Wow, bacteria, <laughs> what? This is like, these exactly. are billions of years old and like, you know, humans are just like millions of years old. And it's just so interesting. Um, thinking about like what aspects of evolution we have yet to understand can help us live a more sustainable future, especially mm -hmm. with like, bacteria and stuff. All right, so let's break this down. So um, what specific bacteria is it? And whatever you can share with us. Yeah, sure. Well, it's E. coli. It's, it's e. a coli. very okay. common kind of strain of bacteria. Okay, yeah. and then what do you, is this, is this in a bioreactor? Where, where are you doing this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, so um, yeah, we grow it in, you know, any sort of like range of scale of bioreactor. So in the last four months at IndyBio, we've actually, we started at like a 10 liter, which is about the equivalent of a large lab scale bioreactor size. And we actually ran our solution through a 300 liter bioreactor size. Nice. And so really scaled up our process in order to actually make the dyed threads and actually test our technology on, an, on a real industrial machine. Yeah. Okay, and then what's going on in the bioreactors with the E. coli bacteria? So yeah. what are you at? Like, how, yeah, tell us about this process. Yeah, well, we actually even have a time lapse that you can see um, on our Instagram page of kind of the whole thing being performed. But um, Perfect, I'll it, embed that right here yeah. for people to watch right now. No, yeah. totally. Um, so, you know, you can basically w w watch it happen, the, the you know, bacteria, they grow, right? And then they, um, as they grow, they just secrete this indigo uh, precursor, actually. Um, some, you know, normal indigo also comes out and then you can kind of see the blue color form uh, before your eyes. And how do you find this specific E. coli that can secrete indigo precursors? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that was based on a lot of the um, kind of existing literature. So I will say here, um, I'm not the, the scientist, the brilliant scientific mind behind this. I'm actually the, the business background You speak here. so well about it. Oh. Yes, please. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, my co-founder, Tammy, is actually the awesome. um, the one who invented it. So She, she invented? Uh, she just like found the E. coli <laughs> that can s secrete yeah, indigo she, Well, precursors. she found the specific enzyme in the indigo plant that is actually the kind of like oh. for the the key key sort of uh, core of our technological oh. um, innovation so here in the metabolic pathway. Yeah. There's an enzyme in the indigo plant, mm -hmm. and then that is, what, what, how does that enzyme get used in the bioreactor with E. coli? Mm -hmm. So we basically um, 
uh, combine the enzyme uh, into, we, or we bring the enzyme into the uh, E. coli, and then um, that allows the, the bacteria to actually um, create the blue color. And create the, yeah. whoa. Okay, and then what is the process like with uh, is the secreting an indigo precursor, and then what do you, do you just like take that from the bioreactor, and then, yeah, tell us about that process. Mm. Um, yeah, so we, if we take it that we, <laughs> there's actually a good amount of purification work and concentration work that needs to be done in order to actually apply that sort of product as a dye. Um, I will say I, uh, uh, we, that, that's one of the key areas that we still want to do a little bit more of, right? So um, when you get it out of the bioreactor, it's, you know, you have the, the precursor, but you also have some media in the, you know, um, in, the, in the broth. And so um, it's funny, we, we didn't do a whole lot of purification. That's actually a, a major milestone of kind of like a work stream of work that we plan to do in the next couple months. Okay, we actually cool. made our first hire over, oh, nice. um, yeah, yeah, who joined us about a week ago. And he brings industry experience in downstream processing. So he's okay. going to be huge for helping us do that. But we didn't do a whole lot of purification work. We instead just like took it straight to the machine and, oh. you know, applied our enzymatic treatment and then you know sort oh. of like uh, cool. ran that process and so what happened was because we had some media still in the in the genes our our, our um, <laughs> our blue genes, our prototype kind of like uh, thread samples are actually slightly too green. So we are literally oh, making cool. genes that are greener <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. For, the, for the world. Um, they're not actually super green, but you know, there's like yeah, a little. slight tinge okay. for anybody who's like super familiar with the denim industry. But that's why uh, the downstream processing is going to be a major kind of work stream for us okay, um, in so the next couple months. There's a broth that comes out mm -hmm. and then you have to purify the broth for exactly. just indigo exactly and then you can take that and then yeah. how does then that get uh, applied to Gene. The genes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so actually, so w when we purify it out, we would purify um, our indigo precursor. Okay. And then that's what we would combine with our enzyme, which would basically form this um, solution for dyeing, which oh. is called leuco indigo. Oh. Um, and so that's what you kind of put into the machine. And then as the machine oh. runs, the indigo kind of forms onto the dye. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, and then um, then it's the similar process of the thread that exactly. then you thread together, and then that's how you make the actual piece exactly. of clothing. Exactly. So yeah, the, okay. the, what comes out of that process would be all of the blue threads that you would need to make a denim fabric. Now I should also say that um, one of the one of the interesting things about the denim production too is that you know you need blue threads, but you also need white threads, and you kind of cross hatch ah, that yeah, together, yes, yes, and yes. that's why when you yeah when you like cut into your jeans, for example, some of the threads are white that are. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and that's kind of otherwise it'd be that just solid blue, exactly. and you can see the white as right. well, the other colors in here. Right. Um, wow, just the awareness level about yeah, understanding genes in general is really important when you're you know at the store, really thinking the supply chain about yeah. where the materials are sourced from, how they're actually made, um, all this type of stuff. Um, and then how about uh, are you looking to just sell indigo is your mm. thing, or are you looking to literally make like a gene product line? That's a great question. Um, so our business model is actually going to be in phases. So um, one of the key things that we are, you know, sure of right now is consumers don't know a lot about this. And, you know, we can't, um, we can't just rely on brands to tell the story, right? We have to also be able to tell the story ourselves and really start to raise that awareness and build the consumer demand. So to do that, we're going to start um, actually by launching our own very limited line of jeans. Um, and that's going to kind of get oh, the yeah. conversation that's going about sure sustainable denim, right? Um, Hype beast arbitrage. Right. Two, <laughs> 200 pairs, that's all you get per city. <laughs> good, good luck. Yeah, yeah. And people are like, I got them, look at my Instagram Exactly. Post. You can yeah. have the, you know, exclusive edition of um, Tinctorium jeans. I'm a sustainable um, person. I support sustainable clothing. <laughs> yes. yeah, 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 We know. We know. <laughs> These marketing strategies. <laughs> okay, cool. So that's going to be the um, first phase. All but right, then, right. of course, right now, you know, we've already gotten really overwhelming response from the denim industry. I think brands are already pretty eager to partner with us. So then our next move would be co-branding lines with jeans, uh, you know, with existing denim manufacturers, starting in kind of the premium segment 
segment where um, you know we can really start to incorporate that technology and start to tell that story. But oh, of cool. course, in the long term, our vision is yeah, we want our technology in this way of you know making and applying denim indigo dye to happen for every single pair of jeans out there. So you you're going to obsolete would. wonderful chemicals out of business. Absolutely, <laughs> if they can get fifty percent market share, we can get fifty percent market share. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> because we're, yeah, we're running through a new future. It's the, the, we, we have to start paying attention to these sorts yeah. of environmental concerns now. We have to do things differently. So we, we think that you know, there's this future where um, that kind of you know, w wasteful, toxic production just doesn't have to be allowed anymore. Yeah. Whoa. I wonder, this is the simil this similar concept, more and more young people being born into the world that become more and more aware of the supply chain processes about how to make things more sustainable, mm -hmm. and then just unleashing more biotech that we still don't, haven't really picked and uncovered, like uh, this indigo enzyme added to E. coli and like, what, you know? And so do you think like cost-wise, are we talking like right now it might be, you know, pretty expensive compared mm. to what, you know, Wonderful Chemicals is doing, but yeah, down the line, it, like in terms of just price over time, you're, yeah. you're thinking like, obviously you don't need a hundred kilograms of petroleum. Yeah. So yeah, so these are the, because that costs a lot of money to like extract that and yeah. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is true. I mean, the chemical process is cheap. That's the only way they're able to do what they're, you know, currently doing at such at such large scales, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I, what I would say is, the dye, you know, process, or at least just sort of the dyeing component in terms of the cogs of making a pair of jeans is actually, you know, really small. And so there's a good amount of we think sensitivity, you know, um, or or desensitivity into, you know, in terms of um, your willingness to to pay more for some more sustainable ingredients, right? And when you're talking about like the core ingredient, most visible ingredient in your genes, if we scaled up our process right now, we would actually, we could actually be making our, our, um, our indigo dye for $3 more per pair of genes. That's it. And so oh. it's like, you know, oh. yeah, okay. sure, current, you know, indigo production process is probably something like a couple cents per pair of jeans, and that's what we would aim for more in the long term. But okay. I think the hmm. point we're trying to make here is yeah. that right in consumers' eyes, if we're really so it's not that starting bad to for, yeah, Exactly. If we were really for, yeah. to scale up the especially if you're talking about fifty dollar pairs of jeans, two hundred dollar pairs of jeans, right? Like who wouldn't want to pay yeah, a couple yeah, dollars yeah. more for a better made pair of jeans? So we're we're sensitive to the ecological factor and I think we're yeah, I think we'd be desensitive to the three dollar price increase if the price of jeans was already like fifty or a hundred dollars exactly. or whatever. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. And the second phase too, I see the partnerships and stuff. This is cool stuff. And then where, okay, so where are you, so you just did first hire, so what else do you, are you looking for right now? You're raising around leaving Indie Bio right. as well. So what's the round? What are you looking to do with it? Yeah, um, yeah, so we're raising a two and a half million dollar seed round. Um, we are uh, primarily, that's gonna get us about a year and a half or two years of runway in order to launch our first line of jeans. That's kind of the big goal. Okay. Um, to do that, we're gonna need some strain engineering, purification work, of course, like I you know, yeah. talked about. I think the strain engineering work is gonna be very much ongoing. The purification work is going to be sort of like a, you know, a deep dive first development so that we can then, uh, a first priority so that we can then prototype a lot of different fabric concepts with shades that are you know, established and standard in the indigo and denim industry. Um, and then, you know, scale up to 10,000 liters with that process so that we can then release our first line of jeans. Nice, <laughs> okay, yeah, you have the roadmap down. Yeah. I love it, I yeah. love it. That's what, that's, what, that's what we need, I love it. Okay, cool, I think we did a, yeah, I think we did a good job covering, like, Tinctorium, good job. Like, there's a lot of good stuff that you guys are doing. Thank I'm you. very proud of you, thanks for coming on, Michelle. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank you. <laughs> Huge shout out to all of you guys for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Also, do check out the links below to Tinctorium. Check out the links below to Indie Bio as well. Support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the organizations around the world that you believe in. Support simulation so we can keep doing cool things like coming on site to Indie Bio for interviews. And also, share more content like this with your friends, your family, coworkers, people online on social media. Talk more about these things, the supply chains around all the products that we buy every single day. Really think about it deeply and inspire children to think about it deeply and change the systems for a better ecological future. Go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. We'll see you soon. Peace. <laughs>